Whether you're using Android, iOS, or even Windows Phone, there's one thing that unites us all. I'm Joe Levi, and on this episode of the Pocket Now Power User, we're going to talk about chargers and why some are faster than others. This topic comes from Natalie and Kristen. Turns out Kristen bought a brand new phone charger that charges her phone about twice as fast as Natalie's in-wall charger. What gives? That's a great question, but first we gotta talk a little bit about electricity. For the most part, electricity comes in two different forms. Alternating current, the stuff that comes out of your wall virtually everywhere in the world, and direct current. Direct current is the stuff that we use inside batteries and inside of our mobile devices. Somehow we've got to convert that AC into DC so that we can charge up our phones and use them. This conversion happens through what we usually just call a charger, but really it comes through something called a rectifier that some people erroneously call an inverter. What it does is it takes that alternating current and through a series of circuits and magic, turns it into direct current that we then can pipe out into our phone. Now all of our phones these days use USB or Apple's equivalent to charge. And Apple's equivalent is essentially the same thing as USB when it comes to power. What's different, however, is voltage and amperage and, you know, that other stuff. So what are those and how do they affect how fast your device charges? In electronics, there's something called Ohm's Law. It has to do with how volts, amps, and ohms, that's as much detail as we're going to go into, uh, how they all interreact. Well, we've got a standard, this USB power standard that we all use in our devices that dictates how many volts we can have coming into our device. And for the most part, that's five volts. Five volts is great. That's what comes out of our computers through the USB port so we can charge up our devices when we're transferring data. We can charge up our devices when we've got our laptop there, all kinds of fun stuff. But now we have these direct plugs that plug into our wall, convert the power from AC into DC like we've been talking about, and then send it across again at five volts. So if everything's five volts, why do some charge faster than others? That's where resistance and amperage come into play. Now resistance really shouldn't be a big deal unless you've got a really cheap cable or, or a cheap charger. See, resistance, just like it sounds, that's the force pushing back against the flow of electricity from the charger into the device. And if you've got a really, really bad cable, or maybe that connector on the end is loose, so it's not making good contact, your resistance is gonna be higher. Even though I mentioned resistance first, the likelihood that you're going to have resistance in a USB cable that's noticeable or that's problematic is really low. What is most likely is you've got low amperage coming out of your charger going through that cable into your device. The lower the amps, the slower the charge. Generally speaking, the more amps that you push into the device, the faster it'll charge. There are a couple caveats there. Your device is only capable of accepting a certain amount of amps. You remember that booklet that you throw away? You know, the quick start guide and whatnot? It probably tells you in there what the maximum amperage is that your device can use. Don't exceed that or you're going to be damaging things and ultimately shortening the life of your charging circuits and probably your battery too. Another thing that you need to keep in mind is that charger can only do so much. So let's take a look at the charger and see, and I'm gonna read right off of this. There are two different sections on this. This one happens to be an LG travel charger. So if I look down at this, it says that it is 100 to 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz. And what that means, that's the alternating current. I can plug this in anywhere from a socket that outputs 100 volts all the way up to 120 volts AC. That covers an awful lot of people, and as long as your outlet has prongs that look just like that, you're probably safe. You know better than I do in your country, and there are a lot of countries with a lot of standards, so don't take this as gospel, just keep that in mind. The next part is the frequency, 50 to 60 hertz. Different places in the world use different frequencies for alternating current. That's how fast the current moves back and forth in the line, 50 to 60 hertz. So that charger will handle anything in that range, which is good because even in the United States where we're 60 hertz, sometimes we get a bit less than that after you know, dirty power and whatnot comes through. So it's nice to have a little bit of wiggle room. The next part, and this might confuse people, 
it says right here that this is 0.2 amps. Well, crap, that doesn't sound like a lot. 0.2, that's hardly any amps. I'd throw that out, right? No, and here's why. That's the AC side of things. So it's drawing 0.2 amps alternating current and then it's gonna convert it into direct current. So let's see the next line down what the direct current does. Reading here it says output is five volts, five volts, direct current, that's good, at 0 0.85 amps, 0 0.85. So not quite one amp, that's just fine, it's 0 0.85, that's a lot better than half an amp, that's a lot better than 0 0.2 amps AC, right? But we're converting it over. So your device, if it supports anything up to 0 0.85 amps, I can use this charger, not a problem. Just plug it in and go, we're good. However, it might not charge all that fast. If my device can accept up to two amps, I can get a charger that's twice as amperage as that and charge my device twice as fast, roughly. So that's where the concern and confusion comes in. Some of the devices that you get to charge up your devices will charge at two amps, some at one, some at one and a half, some at 0.85 like that one does, and some even at half an amp. So keep that in mind and get the highest amperage that you can get as long as your device supports it. That last part is the important part that a lot of people overlook. And why do people overlook it? I'll get a rapid charger, I can plug in the wall and it'll charge up my device twice as fast as something else, but it might be ruining that device in the process. So read those instructions and read those, uh, those notations just to make sure that you're using the right amperage, you're not going above what it's supposed to be, and you'll be safe. So that was a great question, Natalie and Kristen. I appreciate it very much. And with that, that's going to end our second season of the Pocket Now Power User. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and of course, subscribe so you know when the next series is coming out. As always, for Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.